Thank you, Council. I come before the Council tonight completely embarrassed for me, my city, and all of my friends and neighbors that live here. The joke of Elk Grove lives on, and a new chapter is written. I ask myself and you, the Council members, when, we, when, when will we all learn to work together and to respect one another? I'm appalled by Councilman Hume's conduct of threatening a citizen. I speak not of an isolated incident, but of a pattern of abuse over an extended period of over three years. I understand the parties involved had a romantic relationship, but the parties are also a councilman and a community activist, perhaps the strongest activist in the city. Some of these threats were made via the city computer, others made on city property just outside council chambers with an earshot of city staff and the police chief. This makes it a city issue an abuse of power and a violation under the concept of color of law. This takes it out of the realm of personal dirty laundry and makes it a public issue. Hume also threatened to come down from the dais and confront a citizen 25 years his senior during a council meeting in May of 2009. This is simply unacceptable behavior. Threatening a woman is not becoming of any man, much less of a city councilman. Hume's actions speak poorly of his character and judgment. This is not what the citizens expected when they voted him as a representative and their spokesman. Are we so disillusioned with politics that the acceptable standard of behavior has become down to it wasn't a crime, so it's okay? I see parallels between this incident with Councilman Hume and Pittsburgh Cedar quarterback Ben Roethlisberger. Roethlisberger is currently being sued by two women in conjunction with sexual assaults. In both instances, the DA refused to file criminal charges against the quarterback. Roethlisberger did not deny the incident occurred neither is Councilman Hume. The refusal of the DA to file charges in both instances does not in any way mean no improper or malicious conduct occurred. Lack of a criminal conviction is not necessary to establish that someone did something wrong. Regardless, Roethlisberger has been suspended by the NFL commissioner. At least the NFL got it right. The city has a program in place for anger counseling and abuse issues. Perhaps Councilman Hume should seriously consider checking this out. Mayor Sherman. I'm appalled by your behavior as well. You're an embarrassment and a hypocrite. You have single-handedly spent $5,000 of our tax money on ethics investigation on one council member, yet Councilman Yu has admittedly threatened the well-being of a citizen and her family, and you have vehemently argued on the dais to refuse to investigate or discuss this matter at all. What kind of backroom politics is going on? You stated on the dais numerous times you're a strong proponent of programs such as Chicks in Crisis and Weave. You say that you yourself were a victim of abuse, yet you adamantly oppose any investigation or discussion of a council member who admittedly, continually, mentally, and emotionally abused a woman in our city. Your refusal to take a stand only acts to further empower men who abuse women. That is shameful. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Linda Ford and then Danetta Garcia. Good evening. Good evening. I will uh, paraphrase the threat issued by Councilmember Hume toward Ms. Conley, and I'll leave out the extreme profanity. I will take everything, cut it up, throw it on your driveway, pour gasoline everywhere, and set it on fire. Councilmember Hume continued to verbally abuse Ms. Conley by yelling repeatedly, again paraphrasing, you know I will do it. You know I will do it. I won't stop saying it until you tell me you know I will do it. When Ms. Conley advised Councilmember Hume that her driveway slopes downward toward the garage and that such an event could set her home on fire, making it nearly impossible to get her father out safely, Councilmember Hume responded, too effing bad, isn't it? Ms. Conley called me immediately afterwards, and the fear was evident in her voice. I told Ms. Conley to call EGPD and file a complaint, or I would do it for her. I was present on September 18, 2009, when Elk Grove Police Chief Robert Lehner advised Ms. Conley that Councilmember Hume had admitted to the Chief his threat of arson upon Ms. Conley's home. It should be noted that the home in question is occupied by seven souls, one of which is a wheelchair-bound, medically fragile, elderly gentleman who has one way in and one way out of the home, and that is through the garage. Ms. Conley expressed to Chief Lehner the full extent of Councilmember Hume's specific and detailed threat 
And further along in the conversation, Chief Laner told Ms. Conley not to be surprised if Councilmember Hume continued to, quote, punish her. <coughs> Chief Laner was, in fact, correct in that the continued punishment came in the form of a text message from Councilmember Hume to Ms. Conley on December 16, 2009. Councilmember Hume was apparently in a dispute with Vice Mayor Detrick. As in a text message to Ms. Conley, Councilmember Hume stated, I would leave me alone right now, or Steve will cause you collateral damage. Again, another threat of potential violence from Councilmember Hume toward another human being. As Councilmember Cooper stated at the August 14, 2010 Council meeting, some allegations do rise above the level of an ethics violation, and in this case, I believe the violation is criminal. It should be noted that Deputy DA Michael Blazina referred to Councilmember Hume's words as, quote, the threat. Threats such as that issued by Councilmember Hume are considered terroristic in nature, and at the very least are misdemeanors, but may be considered felonies. Councilmember Hume's threats to Ms. Conley and her family rise to the level of a criminal violation. As such, there are remedies available to the Council, which include filing a complaint with the Sacramento County Grand Jury and or filing a complaint with the State Attorney General. Thank you. Next speaker is Donetta Garcia and then Lynn Wheat. Good evening, council members. Good evening. Um, this is about an individual who is a bully. And that individual is Mr. Patrick Hume, and he sits among you. He is not a bully during this year of his election. He's been a bully probably most of his life. And that's why he continues to get away with what he gets away with. Now, I say this at great peril because our families share a friendship, long friendship. But as an activist, you have to disregard those things to speak the truth. Mr. Hume referred to a person like my granddaughter who's allergic to nuts. I said, why don't they just eat the nuts? And get out of the way so we can all who enjoy nuts eat them this is a man who sits with you as a member of your body of your God government he is a man who the chief of police who sits next to me knows would repeat that behavior who the chief of police wanted to do the right thing by talking to him I commend you for that sir but in doing that, you allowed a bully to continue. It saddens me when I come towards government bodies to have to talk to them about the importance of their responsibility. And that's what Pearl is all about. It's promoting ethics and responsible leadership. One day you will not sit on the dais. You will sit as a member of the constituency. And I'm protecting you too. This is not about me. This is about the process. The Code of Ethics, which I helped draft, which became a part of how you lead, certainly some would argue it's voluntary. But if in your life, good behavior is voluntary, then in your public service, so should the Code of Ethics be mandatory. We are who we protect and defend. We are who we stand up for. This isn't a blight against any of you. It's not a blight against your friendships with Mr. Hume. It's doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Yes, we can take it to the ballot box, but we all know that over 67,000 people won't know about this. They won't come to the polls. Put something in place where you protect the citizens, and the citizens will protect you. 
Thank you for your consideration. Uh, Lynn